Hi, I wanted to welcome everyone to this very special press conference, the very first conference that the City of Los Angeles has done on Google+. I think it's going to be exciting, and we'll try to keep it running smoothly. My name is Scott Lehman. I am the founder and CEO of Text Plus, which is a mobile communication company here in LA. Um, as you can tell, I'm one of those 20-something you know, young entrepreneurs <laughs> that everyone likes to talk about. And uh, in my case, it, it actually means that I've been working in the LA tech community for about 20-something years. Um, recently, oops, pardon me, recently, I've been given the chance to uh, support the community in a new way that I'm very proud of which is on the LA's Council for, uh, LA Mayor's Council for Innovation and Industry. And I can tell you that I've been inspired by the mayor's leadership of this council, as well as his commitment to innovation and technology advancement in general. So this is an opportunity for me to say thank you for that. Um, so in a moment, we're going to hear from the mayor. Uh, mayor Villaraigosa's leadership, as I said, on this council has been tremendous, and I think he has some exciting news for us today. He will be followed by Councilman Buscaino, and then I will uh, come back and lead a Q&A with reporters, I think five reporters that have already joined us on the Hangout. And let me introduce those reporters uh, very quickly. We have um, Kathleen Miles from the Huffington Post LA. Hi. Hello. We have Parish Dave, Trojans in the house, USC's Neon Tommy. We have Andrea Chang from the LA Times. We have Michalo Medina from NBC4. Hello. And we have Maria Quiban from Fox 11, and I saw, I think, mommylovestech.com uh, blog. Hi. So thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're watching at home, if you're following along at home, you can tweet with us to hashtag LA Tech. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Via Gregosa. Thank you, Scott, for that uh, introduction. I'm here to announce that I'm also a 20-something <laughs> politician, I guess. Actually, I've been around about 20 years, so uh, it's great to be here and uh, great to be here with all of you. And I want to thank the members of the Innovation uh, and Industry Council who have joined us here today. And it's a pleasure also to be with Councilmember Buscaino, who's here with us and helped us uh, particularly move this through the City Council. And This is the first time the City's ever done a Google Plus uh, press conference, as Scott mentioned. and It shows that uh, how far we've come and how far we need to go. Uh, but uh, we're here at Google in Venice, a site that did not exist two years ago. And uh, I just want to acknowledge all the folks from uh, Google who are here with us today. Uh, and that's because Silicon Beach uh, and the movement uh, has just started uh, over the last couple of years to build some momentum. And today uh, we have a vibrant uh, ecosystem of tech companies calling LA home, companies that are creating the jobs in the industries of the future, companies marked by the boundless creativity uh, that's so emblematic of this town. Uh, Silicon Beach has raised the game and the, the city of LA needed to raise ours and you know what we did I'm here to unveil the first citywide 311 mobile application and showcase the first redesign of the city's website in 15 years now both might have been overdue but I'm very excited that they're here and so are they <laughs> and with the new 311 smartphone app we're putting smart social uh, open government right in the palm of your hand. Now on March 18th, Angelinos will be able to visit the iTunes Store or the Google Play Store to download the app. When they do, they'll be able to submit 11 service requests through their phone from potholes to graffiti removal, bulky item pickup, or trash pickup. They'll be able to see a snapshot of their community with the city info map. This program allows Angelinos to find parks and libraries, fire stations, police stations, swimming pools, and golf courses exactly in the neighborhood they live in. They'll be able to do much more, including one-touch customer service, 
a way to pay your DWP bill, and full social media. And when we do 2.0, they'll be able to pay parking tickets and much more. <laughs> However, we're not just bringing uh, this vision of government to your cell phone, we're also bringing it to your desktop. That's the driving principle behind the new LACity.org. Now you'll find a smarter city website, one with self-updating lists to better connect Angelinos to their services and the information they're looking for. You'll find a more social website, one with live streaming Twitter feeds from every city official right at the bottom of the home page. That'll be fun. <laughs> and you'll find a more open website. <laughs> Just kidding, Ida. I'm having a little fun with you, Ida. Uh, <laughs> and you'll find a more open website, one with live streaming video content and all of our available job opportunities in one location. It's truly a site where Angelinos, small business owners, and tourists can explore all the city has to offer. Now there's always more work to be done, there's always more uh, and newer innovation to be achieved, but today we're proud to be taking two large steps forward. We hope you download the app next month, we hope you visit the new LACity.org today, uh, and we hope you enjoy these new tools to interact uh, with your government. And with that, I'd be more than happy, and I am happy, to introduce Council Member Joel Buscaino, who has a few words to say as well. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. It's a great day in the city of Los Angeles. It's a new day in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, since the founding of Los Angeles in 1791, the world has seen some amazing technological advances that have fundamentally changed the way we live our daily lives. Though it may not always seem like it, but technology has made government more efficient and more effective today. Prior to my election as a city council member, I spent 15 years with the Los Angeles Police Department. Without the advent of the telephone and 911 system, two-way radios, mobile computers and patrol cars, crime stat and DNA testing, we would not have been nearly effective in responding to emergencies and reducing crime like we've had the last 10 years. But the very nature of technology, it's very ever-evolving and advancing. When the 311 system was launched in 2002, it was a remarkable improvement in making city government more accessible to the public. Now, with the launch of the new 311 app, we are making it even more convenient, more efficient, and more cost effective for residents to report problems and request services than the 311 telephone system. Now, while the app will make it easier for residents, to communicate with their government, we recognize that the city of Los Angeles needs to improve the way we communicate with residents. We can't just redesign our website and declare mission accomplished and leave it static and unchanged for the next 15 years. We must ensure we are constantly updating the site with new and rev re relevant information, informing residents about what we are doing as a city to ensure public safety, improve our infrastructure, and deliver core services. We want that two-way communication to hear from our constituents and to share with them what we're doing to improve our neighborhoods. That's why I'm very excited, I'm very excited today to announce the creation of the City of Los Angeles Website Content Manager. This person will be equivalent of the LA Times website editor, responsible for gathering news and information from all city departments and updating LACity.org to ensure we're keeping residents informed and accurate with up-to-date information. A councilman is just one person. We, but with the technology we are unveiling, we will be able to coordinate our limited service more effectively and efficiently. This convergence of the new website, app, and content manager represents the dawn of the new day, of the new age. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to your staff for collaborating with me and my team in the release of this new website. Thank you to Steve Renneker, the general manager of our information technology agency, and Mark Wolf, our executive officer, who I'm pleased to work with on the uh, um, IT committee for allowing me and my office to work with ITA in the development of the new website. I'd also like to thank my colleague, Councilmember Bill Rosendahl, whose district we're in today, Venice, 
um, and, and for him to welcome Google with open arms in his district. And finally, of course, I'd like to thank Google. Thank you, Google, not only for hosting us today, but for constantly innovating and creating products that help me and my staff more effect effectively collaborate with each other and communicate with my constituents. Thank you. Thank you. I think a uh, very exciting day, and the website looks beautiful. Um, it is time to break some new ground and enter the world of Hangout, one of my favorite technologies, especially since no one has been able to tell that the three of us have been lip syncing during this <laughs> entire meeting so far. Um, and so we will go to Q&A. The first question is from our friend at the LA Times, Andrea Cheng. Andrea? You're muted, Andrea. Yep. Can you guys hear me? Good? Yep. Okay. Um, can you just talk about the process involved in developing the mobile app and the new website? Uh, how long did it take? Who was involved? And did the city reach out to startups or entrepreneurs in Silicon Beach for help? Sure. Well, it's actually been a very quick process. For the last three months, we've, we've brought in uh, a company, 3DI, that, that's helped us develop the mobile app and come up with the, the design and, and, and really a new look at the way mobile apps are done. And it's not just a traditional service request type of uh, system. It's really one that allows you to pay your bill, allows you to um, see some of our social media type of activities that are going on out there. So it's really a portal for mobile apps and, and services. So we're very excited about it. And, and let me just add to that because uh, it's been a short process since we finally got the go ahead. But we've actually been working on this for some time. Uh, the, uh, there have been some bureaucratic obstacles to be able to get in the position where we could do this in the first place. And I want to acknowledge the CAO. Uh, for his work in getting through those bureaucratic obstacles. Of course, my staff as well, uh, who uh, I kept on tasking uh, with uh, getting into the 21st century, frankly, and doing what we needed to do. Uh, because this launch, by the way, uh, is uh, the launch of a, what is today a national model. There are a number of cities that were way ahead of LA. But this app is going to put us in a position of being uh, right there at the top of the heap when it comes to mobile apps and the ability to access services, to report uh, problems, uh, to pay your bills, and the like. Uh, our next question, pardon me, Mr. Mayor. Our next question comes from Huffington Post, Kathleen Miles. Hi there. Um, the city council votes are currently posted on your website, and I know that they will continue to be, but they're not always posted um, very quickly, and they're not easily shareable. So I was wondering if they might be able to be tweeted out and posted on Facebook so that we, um, you know, everyone who checks Facebook and Twitter on their phones all day can see um, how city council is voting on issues quickly and retweet, uh, repost, share, and interact with those uh, votes. That's why we're hiring someone to help us uh, do this stuff uh, in real time uh, so there isn't the kind of lag that you just mentioned. Uh, in, in addition, uh, we're already thinking about uh, what will be in the 2.0 version. Uh, as an example, I mentioned paying uh, parking uh, fines as an example, but there will be other things as well. And so this will, as we launch this uh, in March uh, and uh, we you know, begin to use, uh, customers begin to use it. Uh, we'll get input from them uh, and build on uh, a 2.0 version as well. Uh, Parish Dave, please. From Tommy. Hello. <clears throat> I'm just wondering um, what you'll be doing to partner with, you know, cell phone providers or other businesses, cell phone providers mainly. Uh, to get this app out to residents, uh, especially here in South LA? That's a, a good point. I mean, first of all, we're announcing this launch now because over the course of the next month, uh, we're going to want to get it out to the public, uh, to LA residents as much as possible, uh, that uh, this app is available, that it will be available beginning March uh, 18th. 
uh, and that uh, and so we're going to want to really get the word out and anything you could do to help us do that obviously and it's going to be important uh, we'll do that bilingually 2.0 I've already said to, to oh, my staff uh, I expect will be bilingual uh, because this is a town uh, where uh, there are a lot of people that speak many languages but uh, uh, the, the second language of LA obviously is Spanish so we're going to work on building uh, on the foundation that we're laying here and with this good gentleman to my left who comes from the great city of Riverside and has done a great job there to bring Wi-Fi citywide and just a whole number you know gotten awards we expect that he's going to be uh, really moving all this along uh, uh, and building on this foundation pardon me sir the next question is from Mikala Medina, and then we'll take one from Maria Quibon after that. Thank you. Hi, Mayor. A couple of questions for you. First, uh, how much did it cost? Secondly, uh, once uh, 2.0 is uh, created, does this mean better savings for the city because people but, uh, will be able to pay their bills a little bit faster? Does that mean lesser people actually working in government? And my last question... Oh, wait, wait, wait. One at a time. One at a time. Three <laughs> questions and expect me to remember the first, second, and third. Well, I'm thinking of the answer. Um, about $150,000 uh, it cost us. It was $130,000. I'm sorry. I said about, but yeah, okay. $130,000 uh, to develop this. It was very uh, reasonable. Like I said, there were things that prevented us from even doing all of this uh, that I don't need to go into. Uh, but uh, And then the, the website was about $500,000. The cost so it's relatively inexpensive and the applications as you can see uh, are, are going to be uh, uh, well worth uh, the investment and could they save, question could they save money in the long run for the city and could they replace people eventually well they're certainly going to provide uh, our constituents uh, with uh, ease of pavement uh, with uh, you know, uh, uh, an easier way to report problems uh, and the like. I imagine it will save uh, some money, but uh, that wasn't. Uh, uh, but I can't tell you exactly how much uh, at this point. We'll have to see. Uh, and I do think it'll save certainly time, make us more efficient. Uh, with uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously, this will help. Uh, the city as well, but I, this was primarily done for the purpose of providing ease to the customer, to the people that we work for. And my last question for you, has the president extended the offer of Secretary of Labor yet? I hear my cousin, by the way. <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> is a, uh, is uh, on the list and I'm glad he is. I've said to a number of people he would make a great Secretary of Labor. As you know, he comes from the United Food and Commercial Workers. Uh, he uh, has been uh, a voice for labor for a very, very long time and I, I wish him luck uh, as Secretary of Labor uh, should they uh, select him. But you didn't answer my I, question. I, I, any, any offer to you? I'm, I'm, I've, I've already spoken to that. Okay. <laughs> Maria. Hola. Uh, Hola. First of all, I want to say congratulations um, with the new website and coming into the 21st century. We're very excited about the new technology that's coming out of the city. I have two questions, one for you and probably the other one for uh, Councilman Buscaino. My first question is, while we have free Wi-Fi hotspots around Los Angeles provided mostly by cafes and coffee shops, we're still really behind many other cities across the country, even other countries. I think you mentioned this yourself when it comes to free Wi-Fi access. Are there plans um, to offer free city Wi-Fi uh, wi wide access for, for us here like there is in New York City or Minneapolis? Well, let me, let me speak to, to that because if you remember, I think it was in 2000 no, was it was it 2009 mm -hmm. or maybe 2007? We had proposed, uh, along with San Francisco and Philadelphia and a number of other cities, to go citywide Wi-Fi, and then 
all of us kind of hit a glitch. It mm. was uh, um, none of us were able to get uh, to that goal. Um, obviously, the city's a lot bigger uh, than Riverside, uh, so it's not an easy uh, goal to hit. Uh, you should know at the International Terminal, the new International Terminal, uh, mm -hmm. we will have free Wi-Fi uh, at the Bradley uh, Pavilion there. Um, we are the Bradley West Gates. Um, and I'll let you speak to that. I know that that's a goal. Uh, there are technological hurdles to it and costs. Uh, mm -hmm. Initially, uh, we had thought of... Uh, shifting the cost uh, to uh, providers, but uh, and it didn't work out here or in some of the other big cities that I just mentioned, but uh, I'll let uh, this young man speak to that. Well, well, certainly we're going to take a look at We're going to look at all the providers that are actually doing wireless today, and I think really the focus is going to be those that afford it versus those that can't, and certainly those that can afford it There'll be higher speeds available from the AT&Ts and the Verizons and the T-Mobiles out there. But then the, for those that can't, I mean, I think truly we're going to take a look at some options out there, see if we can't expand our hotspots, and who knows, maybe L.A. will be a citywide wireless city someday. Great. Well, we're going to look forward to that. Um, my second question is, I, I like the website. It really looks good, and it looks like you'll be posting live uh, city council meetings on the website. In the spirit of this Google Hangout, can we, for those of us who can't physically be there, is there a way for us to participate in these meetings, perhaps ask questions of our elected officials? Um, you know, I think we have an extensive public comment period as it is for those who turn in, <laughs> tune in on Channel 35. But uh, as the mayor indicated, uh, as we launch this, this is ever evolving. And uh, we, I mean, ultimately, wouldn't it be great to have uh, one click of the button to be a part of your government here in the city of Los Angeles where you can clearly click on uh, the website and uh, express some public comment on the uh, the agenda and uh, I think uh, we're moving towards that direction um, but, but as we uh, as we move forward in the process as the mayor indicated we need to hear from each and every one of you to see exactly uh, how we're going to capitalize on on this opportunity to be inclusive and be transparent in city government I tell you, though, in the last seven years, whether it's uh, DWP meetings, Port of LA meetings, LAX meetings, we've done a lot more uh, to provide transparency than we ever have. Uh, but uh, certainly, um, that kind of interaction is probably going to be something we're going to see in the future. I just couldn't tell you what it looks like because um, we're in the process. We, we're going to launch this. 1.0 version. We'll build on that, and I imagine uh, last time I looked, there's a uh, an election coming, and imagine the next mayor of Los Angeles will want to build on what we're what we've done here. But this was a goal that we uh, felt very strongly uh, that we needed to meet, and I'm excited that we're going to be able to launch this uh, uh, next month. And as I said, the new website is available now. So log on. Anybody else? Are there any apps that are particularly useful to you, Mr. Mayor, that you use daily that you know, better into the system? Apps that I use daily. <laughs> yeah, mostly the newspapers. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I read the the journal, the New York Times, Financial Times, every day. The LA Times w app is getting a little better. Um, uh, but um, so those are the ones I, I deal with every day and then of course you know Newsweek, Time, The Economist, The Atlantic, The New Yorker. No, no I don't have time for that but so mostly mostly reading. Mo most of it, I open those virtually every day. I don't. I don't. I don't drive right now. I will be soon. <laughs> I better get some driving lessons, right? Based on what you've actually, actually at home, I get the the LA Times, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times. Uh, so I do like seeing. Yeah, I, I think, by the way, as a suggestion to all of you, 
I think it would be great to be able to see on the apps what the paper looks like in, in the physical. Uh, because you, you, placement, you never know what placement is really like, you know. And I know the, I mean, I, I think that that would be a good thing for me. That's why hey, I Mayor. get the paper at home because it shows you. Uh, Mayor, are you an iOS or are you an Android guy? Uh, <laughs> I am here at Google. Can I? <laughs> I love Google. Okay, me too. I really love Google. Based on what you've really seen with Google. Based on what you've seen with other cities that have uh, 311 apps, do you expect an uptick in like the number of complaints reported? And then do. does the do. city have I, the I think you'll see staff more complaints to... and rightfully so. Uh, I think you'll see less frustration. Uh, I think you'll see a uh, quicker response uh, to problems, whether it's graffiti or potholes or uh, trash pickup, bulky items, the, I guess 12 items that we've, 11 items that we've listed. Uh, as I said, I also think that, you know, what number of cities have gone before us, uh, this is probably, it looks to me to be a, the best. I imagine there'll be a little competition and they'll try to one-up us and then we'll learn from them and that's what mayors do, uh, that's what cities do and um, I certainly uh, look forward to that. But without Measure A, does the city have enough staff to sort of handle the uptick in complaints and respond to them quickly and appropriately? Well, I think on Monday I'm going to announce, speak a little bit to that. Um, I just want to acknowledge the City Council for passing the economic development uh, proposal that I put forward. I, I've said, uh, I've listed the number of things that I felt I needed before I could get behind uh, th that measure and uh, the, the Council's responded and I want to acknowledge them for that. Uh, you know, I wanted a, uh, an adequate city reserve. I wanted to protect police hiring no matter what happens here. Uh, I said that uh, we need an economic development department. We've got to get out of the business of uh, the city running the convention center. We've got to have an alternative model for running zoos. Uh, we, we've got to get into the 21st century with respect to uh, being more efficient uh, and being smarter with the way we uh, run some of our city operations. And so. Uh, uh, I think we'll have the capacity to do what we need to do uh, going forward. How different is uh, this 311 app from the one that was launched in uh, Councilman Garcetti's district a year ago? That was, a, that was an improvement over what we had before. This is citywide uh, and you know it, it, it certainly builds on that and I want to acknowledge it, it's much more comprehensive but I want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Garcetti for what he did in the 13th. It was certainly uh, something that uh, we were able to build on, but this is much more uh, comprehensive. Um, Mayor, can I ask a I'm question? Sorry, about... I, got, I got one right here. I'm sorry. I wanted to ask if uh, city employees will be communicating directly through the app with people, or will there be a process of so initially, it's just going to be one way uh, on, on version 1.0. So it'll come in, the request comes in from the mobile device as an email to our 311 center, and they're kind of the master dispatcher, if you will, for uh, that, that phase one. Phase two, which will be coming later on this summer, is actually going to be able to create work orders as a result of it and actually track the end result in the department, and that will provide the mayor and the city council with those dashboards of where the requests are coming in and what our ability is to respond effectively. Um, how will this website or the app play a role in breaking new situations like or emergencies as in earthquakes or a terrorist threat? Well we have a see something say something program. Mm -hmm. um, the answer is I, I can't I, I, don't have an exact answer to that, but I, I see as almost limitless what the future holds. And, and there's really smart people here at Google 
um, and 3DI and others, uh, some of the tech council people. I, I see, I see, I'm a you know a limitless application here, but uh, smarter people than me and more creative people than I uh, will figure that out. Uh, so I, I can't tell you exactly, but I, I do see all of those things as being things that might have an application going into the future. Yes. So 15 years is a long time in this day and age to go without uh, maybe what's up to redesign. Uh, you mentioned some bureaucratic hurdles that have been covered in the uh, And how much of an issue has this been throughout your administration since some of you identified early on and have just been uh, dealing with speed bumps up to this point? Well, remember, we've been dealing with the worst recession since the 1930s. Um, and early on, we were told that the cost of this would be much greater than it turned out to be. In addition to that, we had issues with the city attorney's office in how we move ahead uh, with respect to this. Uh, and once we and there were a number of other hurdles as well. Uh, and once we got through them and just pushed through them, uh, we were able to in a very short period of time uh, get to where we are today. Um, and uh, as I said, I think what you're going to see is a more transparent and open, smarter uh, government, uh, one where our constituents really have uh, an opportunity to, to uh, in real time, uh, let us know uh, where there's some issues, some problems, some needs, uh, some services that need to be provided. I'll take one more or two more. Mayor, you just um, mentioned the Tech Council. Can we get an update on how that is going and, and what the council is doing to encourage I I more? I can't tell you that, 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 I'm sorry, I'll let you finish that. No, 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 what you're doing to encourage more tech to kind of move into the city and to stay here. Yeah, you were at, you were at the opening, I think, weren't you? <laughs> at Rubicon. I thought, I thought so. I, nothing, I mean, since then, I, I can't tell you that anything uh, has happened other, other than we're moving ahead on a number of those recommendations. I will tell you this, um, on almost a daily level, our office is getting inquiries about, uh, you know, Silicon Beach, about citing uh, a company, about, uh, there's a lot of interest in Alley for a lot of reasons. One, I mean, the future is, you know, tech with content and entertainment, and this is the entertainment capital. You know, we we graduate more engineers than any metropolitan area in the United States. Um, and before they used to leave, and now we're, we're as you know, one of the things we're, we're going to be working on is getting them to stay here. That's one of the recommendations of the council. Um, and uh, the, the cost of living, you know, as, as high as the cost of living is here, it's even higher in other places. Uh, I won't mention them, but you know, so uh, interestingly enough, uh, folks are uh, wanting to come here uh, because of that as well. Thank you. Not to mention the, the fact that there's no gross receipts tax for the next three years. Uh, and, and I think what we, you know, and I'm very proud of this, and I want to acknowledge uh, first Austin Butner, uh, but Matt Carrots. You know, we, we have, we, 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 we happen to believe in this town that uh, business could go anywhere. They don't have to be in LA. And so we're very aggressive about bringing uh, business to uh, Los Angeles, about cutting red tape, about making it easier for them to be here. And uh, I, I call personally, I mean, remember, uh, Google is here uh, because I had a dinner with Eric Schmidt uh, and he was talking about uh, another city where he was located and I explained to him uh, that I wasn't the mayor of Southern California, I was the mayor of the city of LA and that I could get more excited if he was in the city of LA and uh, he made a promise and he came and I, I appreciated that and we're hope we're looking for some more space for Google to expand and uh, we want uh, and because they're here, you're seeing more and more companies, uh, particularly small, smaller startup companies are coming. We're looking to bring more venture capital here. That's a big need uh, in LA uh, that uh, we really want to work on. And we think, I mean, is an area where 
we could, um, once we bring more uh, venture capital companies, I think you're going to see even, uh, an even faster growth here. Mayor, Mayor as you move on um, forward, moving on beyond the mayor's office, what are some of your words of wisdom for the incoming mayor? They want no words of wisdom from me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, look, I, I, uh, I'll just say something I've said before, but I want to say it again. Uh, you got, I, I know three of the candidates uh, very well. I've worked with them. Uh, they're working hard uh, to get the support they need to, to become the next mayor of Los Angeles. Whoever is elected uh, will have my unqualified support. I love this town. You know, one of the things about being born and raised here, and, and in my case, being a third generation Angelino, is that you know I, I'm, I, I intend to stay here and 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 support not only the next mayor but anything this city needs because you know this is where I was born and raised. So I, I don't have any advice right now, and, and any advice I give them will be uh, uh, one on one, uh, not mm -hmm. to be shared. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, everybody.